What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Got some major news for you guys. Take a look at this. Russian lawmakers to consider revoking a nuclear test ban ratification as they look like they're getting closer and closer to using or testing nuclear weapons as they're talking about this even on national TV in Russia. Take a look here. Yeah, Russian parliament will consider revoking the ratification of a ban on nuclear tests, the leader of its lower house announced. State Duma Speaker, <laughs> yeah, good luck pronouncing this, Vlashka Slav Vodolin cited Western allies' support for Ukraine against Russia's invasion as one reason to consider going back on the ban. Quote, Washington and Brussels have unleashed a war against our country. You know, after they invaded another country and started a war. They said, according to the Associated Press, today's challenges require new decisions. He said senior lawmakers will discuss recalling the 2000 ratification of the nuclear test ban at the next meeting of the House Council. Quote, it confirms with our national interest, and it will come up as a quid pro quo response to the United States, which has still failed to ratify the treaty. Revoking the ban was first floated by Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday when he announced the country had recently done testing on a new nuclear missile platform with a range of up to 14,000 miles, which the U.S. is well within range of, especially going through the Alaska side. Yeah. U.S. officials signed, but Congress did not ratify, the 1996 Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban. Russia did ratify and sign the treaty, however. Interesting. Putin warned Thursday that Russia could do the same. Theoretically, we may revoke the ratification. The Russian leader said, it's up to the state Duma members. But that doesn't mean Russia would immediately start nuclear testing again. I'm not ready to say yet whether it's necessary for us to conduct tests or not. Russian officials have repeatedly threatened escalation of conflict with the U.S. and Western allies over their support. This comes as the U.S. moves closer to underground testing of nuclear weapons stockpile without any actual explosions. Here's the details on this. Scientists charged with ensuring the aging U.S. stockpile of nuclear weapons are good to go if needed. This comes after we just had that national U.S. <laughs> alert system, right, that sent out text messages and, you know, big audible warnings across the whole country, say they'll start shipping key components to Nevada's desert next year to prepare for underground testing they call tickling the dragon's tail. Tickling the dragon's tail. Experts at the National Defense Laboratories haven't been able to physically validate the effectiveness and reliability of nuclear warheads since 1992 underground test ban. Well, yeah, that is 30 years. But Energy Department officials announced Thursday they're on the verge of piecing together the technology needed to do the next best thing. These things have been sitting for 30 years without anything. As early as 2027, the $1.8 billion Scorpius project will make it possible to move beyond theoretical computer mo modeling. 
as early as 2027, okay, to study in much more detail the conditions found inside the final stages of a nuclear weapon implosion, but without the nuclear explosion. Said John Cluster, the Sandia project lead in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Scientists call it the tickling the dragon's tail because the experiment approaches but stays below the stage which the fission of nuclear material sustains an ongoing series of chain reactions. Boy, that just sure sounds safe. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this. The hope is to answer many pivotal questions about whether the nation's aging nuclear weapons still work as designed. During the Cold War, those questions were answered by actually setting off nuclear explosions. In the 50s and 60s, the explosions sent mushroom clouds high into the sky above New Mexico and Nevada deserts. Testings later were limited to underground explosions, which ended in 1992. Yeah, all that sounds really, really safe and really, really good for our environment. In the works for 10 years, a new era of testing has advanced to the next phase at Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico, where workers have started assembling the high-energy electron beam injector, considering the most complex piece of Scorpius Energy Department officials said Thursday. The experimental machine the length of a football field eventually will sit a thousand feet below the ground at Nevada National Security Site. It's clear we need to know the stockpile will work if required. So just think about all this stuff that they're thinking and talking about. If you had a car in your garage for 30 to 50 years and one day you insert the ignition key, how confident? How confident are you that it will start? That's how old our nuclear deterrent is. It has been more than 30 years since we conducted an underground nuclear explosive test. This is a quote. Yeah, so this is the stuff they're actually talking about in Russia and the United States, guys. Yeah, this is, this is just absolutely just sad, sad, and preposterous times. It's a sad thing that these bombs and even exist. It's just unbelievable world ending type of stuff. It's 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 I, I, there's no words for this stuff. It's just unbelievable that this stuff even exists. This is why preppers really fear that the, 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 the these are end of world times. I don't I don't blame people that uh, that prep for a little bit for the end of the world, you know, and have food storages. And, uh, you know, this is why bomb shelters even exist, right? Think about World War II bomb shelters. And, um, you know, Russia has actually been preparing and revamping World War II bomb shelters. Okay, so, um, well, I mean, no offense, they're in a war, right? I mean, uh, yeah. It's not not unheard of to even be thinking about that type of stuff, right? Um, these are these are trying times. These are trying times. This just comes after here, Russia getting a lot of criticism here for an attack that killed 52 people in a Ukrainian village. You can see here, uh, Ukraine says Russia killed Russia strike killed 51. In one of the deadliest attacks of the war, take a look here. A Russian missile strike killed at least 51 people, including a child, in a village near the eastern Ukrainian city of Kupinsk on Thursday, officials say, in one of the deadliest attacks against civilians since the conflict began. Moscow's forces targeted a cafe and a shop in Horoza. Isn't this sad? And, and you know, and there's there's people that still say, oh, <laughs> civilians are, aren't getting targeted, civilians aren't getting hit. Yeah. In midday local time, according according to you know, Ukrainian interior minister. 
Scenes emerged of emergency workers wading through dense rubble in the aftermath of the attack. Doctors are treating six people injured. Why are they even hitting a cafe and a shop? There's no military targets there. A cafe and a shop in, in midday. <sighs> yeah, I mean, and I mean, you, you can see this here. This is, this is just sad, sad times. 29 victims have already been identified. Yeah. Locals were inside a store when missiles ripped through. You know. Uh. Triggering a, a devastation on the scale since an attack on the railway station in Kramatorsk in early 2022 that killed more than 60 people. According to the latest death toll, the attack wiped out about one-fifth of the village, which was home to 330 people. Wow. And it's like, how long will this can this go on? What actions can be taken against Russia? You know? You guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here. If you haven't yet, subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for liking and sharing these videos. Your mainstream news does not cover a lot of the stuff that goes on here on a daily basis. Click here to see Russia talking about exploding a thermonuclear atomic bomb over their own country. Or Russia says that they want to invade five NATO countries. Click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.